there are three realms in this world, heaven, human, and the boundary realm. These realms exist due to something called the spirit aura. In order to keep the balance, this aura must circulate among the three realms. Those who collect the spirit aura are men from the boundary realm, called the black and white warriors. And this is where our story begins. Two black and white warrior children are wielding their weapons against a beast in the middle of the night. The white-haired child, called Chowbai, gets caught in the monster's claws. Just then, an alarm clock rings and a black-haired child, called Chowhee, wakes up and hurries to Chowbai's room who we discover is her sister. The children run quickly towards a large castle to clock in for work. Inside we find Master Yama, who is the two children's boss. He's a little annoyed that the kids are late but asks for an update regarding their tasks. Chowbai responds that they have yet to finish their tasks, which of course angers Master Yama. He drives them out of the castle and demands that they go back to work. The siblings board the ship to the human realm where they meet other black and white warriors. The ship takes them to the human realm, where we see a child in a dark alley getting beaten up by multiple men who are trying to squeeze money out of him. This child has superhuman strength and takes out the very last man standing in his way. As soon as he does, Chow Bai and Chow He arrive and immediately notice this child is possessed with a wandering spirit. The warrior children take their weapons out but are slightly alarmed at the power of the spirit before them. They opt for plan B, which is to take a defensive and an almost escapist approach to fighting, and tire out their opponent. They actually run away from the fight and try to seek help from the spirit hunt team, but the wandering spirit catches up to them. The two are then taken away by an unknown force in the spirit, who is now the beast from earlier, which follows them to a nearby rooftop. Chow Bai gets clawed, but Chow He catches her before she falls to the ground. The monster gears up to attack the kids, but another warrior blocks the attack and helps the kids fight the beast. The wandering spirit eventually gets defeated, and the woman who helped them flees without a trace. Bai Long, who is a powerful spirit hunter, locks in on more wandering spirits escaping from a sealed area. Him and his team scramble to strengthen the seals, and inform the palaces in other realms at once. Meanwhile, Chow Bai and Chow He get scolded by Master Yama for not being able to defeat the wandering spirit. He threatens to fire them, but the two aren't even listening to his sermons. Suddenly, Zhang Kui, a Ten Hell General, arrives at Master Yama's place. It is revealed that he's the kid's caretaker, and even goes so far as to jokingly ask Master Yama if they can stay at his house for the time being. As Yama's secretary, called Sha, gives another task to the children. Zhang reports that the seal of Kanchai will break soon. We then cut back to the human realm again, and the kids watch over a cartoonist as he works on a manga. As it turns out, the children are there to escort this man's soul to the boundary realm, but need to make his death an accident. While looking for flower pots to drop on his head, they spot the man getting into a cab and quickly follow him. Meanwhile, under the sea the seal starts to break. The children follow the guy as he tries submitting his finished manga to a publisher. Dressed as a homeless person, Chow He tries to keep him in place as Chow Bai looks for a flower pot. The man gives the boy money, but Chow He refuses saying that it won't even buy him a meal. The man gives him a sandwich instead, and leaves him just as Chow Bai comes back to tell her brother she can't find any flower pots in the office building. The man's manga isn't accepted by the editor for a multitude of reasons, but the man stands up for himself and his story. The editor gives him hell until he leaves the building deflated. We discover that Chow He had possessed the editor in order to get the man to commit suicide. Up on the roof, he contemplates the past 10 years of his life. As he does, he spots his friend whom he thought was into him romantically with another man. Looking all lovey-dovey, we see that this is actually Chow He's doing in an attempt to get him to die. And Chow Bai questions her brother's integrity, saying his ideals shouldn't have to be attacked like this. The children watch as the guy jumps to his death. But Chow He remembers the sandwich that the guy gave him earlier, and suddenly feels guilty. The kids swoop down and save the guy from dying. The guy wakes up unharmed, and sees his unpossessed editor run towards him and offer him a publishing deal. The guy is saved, and the kids start crying because they saved the man instead of killing him, which is the exact opposite of their mission. Meanwhile, Bai Long and his team estimate that they have less than three days left until the seal breaks completely. In a vast field, a man with white hair starts training with a robot. After practically destroying the robot he is greeted by Lu Xu, the woman who saved Chow Bai and Chow He from the wandering spirit. The guy reminds Lu Xu to train after spirit hunters are being mobilized because of the spirit seal. A messenger comes running to the pair and tells them that they need to go to the White Mountain where the Great Seal is located, immediately on a reconnaissance mission. Meanwhile, Chow He finds himself in an unfamiliar place and remembers what happened, realizing that he has been taken away from his sister by a spirit monster. Elsewhere, Zhang scolds Chow Bai for making trouble. Chow Bai tearfully explains that they were only trying to help an old man fulfill his last wish, but a monster suddenly attacked them. 
A guard reveals that the seal might break at any time now and Zhang goes on to order that more people should be sent down there. Bai Long comforts the little girl and tells her that the spirit hunters have been deployed. Meanwhile, Chao Yi tries to come up with a plan to escape but finds himself at a loss, when suddenly, an image of Chao Bai appears before him and asks why he left her alone. He runs to her but the image suddenly fades away. Meanwhile, Bai Long explains to Chao Bai that the seal of Tianchai actually holds the 100 ghost spirit. Around 1000 years ago, Master Zhang sealed 99 of the most violent ghosts there, and the spirit monster had been gathering the ghosts that leaked from the seal, and mistook Chao Yi as one of the spirits. Just as Bai Long finishes his monologue, the seal gets broken. The water below starts to glow red before exploding releasing immense energy to the world. Somewhere else, Chao Yi reflects on his life with Chao Bai, when suddenly he hears a whistle coming from somewhere. He runs towards the sound, stopping in front of a large statue, and asks if there's anyone who can hear him. Just then, a man on top of the statue laughs at his plight, but the seal-broken spirits are free to escape into the human realm. The spirit hunters work hard to stop them, but a large monster spirit emerges from the seal and confronts Zhang and his crew. They immediately realize that this is the 100 ghost spirit. Meanwhile, Chao Yi is busy with his own enemy. This guy taunts him, and immediately puts restraints on poor Chao Yi. The guy reveals to Chao Yi that he is imprisoned inside the seal, and now he's stuck down there with other vicious spirits. Back outside, Zhang and the 100 ghost spirit reunited before getting into a fight. However, Zhang easily defeats the spirit with his spit, and then orders for the Jinko cannon to be prepared soon. Bai Long asks if he's sure since the cannon is really strong, and Zhang responds that bombing the place to the ground is better than having Chao Yi turn into a monster like the 100 Ghost. Back down, Chao Yi breaks out of his restraints easily. He watches as the spirits get absorbed by the guy antagonizing him, completely unaware that a monster is behind him. Back on the ship, Zhang says that he'll rescue Chao Yi. Lu Xu appears and Zhang entrusts Chao Bai with her care, before instructing Bai Long to launch the Jinko cannon and destroy the Great Seal if he's not back in one hour. Zhang jumps into the seal to find Chao Yi. Chao Yi easily defeats the monster sneaking up behind him. He is attacked by the man, who finally introduces himself as San Wu Zi. He seems to know Chao Yi personally, even calling him by his real name, Wang Hen, which of course shocks the boy. Wu Zi continues to attack Chao Yi, even getting a spirit to wrap itself on the boy's body. Chao Yi breaks free and in the process absorbs the spirit in his body. With spirits escaping at an alarming rate, Zhang goes straight for the seal's opening but is stopped by enemies who want revenge. Back down, Chao Yi keeps absorbing spirits into his body. Wu Zi watches the whole thing unfold, while stating that Chao Yi needs to eat more spirits to get strong and join his team once more. Chao Yi suddenly implodes and transforms into a grown man. Zhang then warns his enemies. Meanwhile, Bai Long watches as another strange spirit appears in their meter, and they suspect it to be Chao Yi. Chao Bai is confused because initially, her brother doesn't have any spiritual power. Lu Xu wonders if something happened inside the seal for him to gain power quickly, and deduces that Chao He must be the hundredth ghost. Wu Zi greets Chao He, now calling him Wang Heng, and starts attacking him. The pair battle it out, but Chao He, or Wang Heng, succeeds in incapacitating Wu Zi. The intensity of their battle reaches the outskirts of the seal, where Zhang is currently located. He immediately knows that the ghost aura of Chao He, which is Wang Heng, has been released. Zhang finally defeats the people trying to stop him from getting into the seal and goes on his merry way. Back down, Wu Zi wants a round two with Wang Heng, but his words strike a chord in Wang Heng's memories. Wang Heng remembers a younger Chao Bai, asking him not to leave her alone. This momentary pause gives Wu Zi an opening and tries to swallow Wang Heng. However, the latter keeps getting flashbacks of his past human life with Chao Bai. On the ship, the signal meter is heavily damaged rendering them almost useless in monitoring the seal. Once the screen returns to normal, Bai Long sees glimpses of Wang Heng about to be feasted on by Wu Zi. Back down, Zhang appears just in time and confronts Wu Zi. The latter admits to eating Wang Heng, which makes Zhang angry. However, the energy Wu Zi gained from Wang Heng gives him incredible power, and he manages to stop Zhang with ease. Up on the ship, Bai Long and the crew see all of this happen and try to hide it from Chao Bai, but it's too late. Back inside the seal, Zhang is fuming and threatens Wu Zi. Wu Zi taunts Zhang, which was an incredibly bad move on his part, and Zhang unleashes his full power on Wu Zi. In a flashback, a younger Wang Heng is revealed to be a prince living in a palace. The queen is approached by one of her maids, saying that there are rumors going around about the princess being possessed by a fox spirit, and that she needs to be killed. The queen is instructing Wang Heng to take care of his sister, when a messenger runs in and reports that courtiers have come to protest the princess's existence. Somewhere in the dark plains of Wu Zi's stomach, Chao He the child warrior, Wang Heng the grown man's spirit, and the prince Wang Heng meet. Back on the ship, Chao Bai learns of her brother's disappearance. In Wu Zi's stomach, 
The prince remembers his sword training. It appears that the prince and princess have gone into hiding after the world had become too turbulent for them to stay in the palace. Meanwhile, the Jinko cannon has been prepared. Lu Xu makes Chao Bai understand that Wang Heng was a brutal spirit who killed many humans. The spirit hunters couldn't defeat him, so the Boundary Realm erased his memories and kept him in prison. Lu Xu lies to Chao Bai to make her believe that Chao He is not her brother. More memories of Chao He start popping up. And in this one, the prince and princess are almost killed by someone they trusted. Suddenly, the fox spirit that lives inside the princess appears, and defeats the men. In another flashback, the prince and princess are still in hiding. Chao Bai, whose name as a princess is Chao Wan, refuses the steamed bun her brother offers her. Chao Yi then gives her a pretty toy that resembles a flower, and Chao Wan refuses to play with it still. However, she eyes the toy and suggests to Chao Yi to visit the old autumn festival in the hopes of getting food for them. She takes the toy and thanks Chao Yi as he leaves. Suddenly, the fox spirit comes out of the princess and is confronted by Lu Xu and another warrior. Meanwhile, Chao Yi gets mooncakes for his sister but overhears a couple of village folk, saying that the princess of the past dynasty was captured and will now be tortured. Chao Yi hurries and sees Chao Wan in the middle of the palace grounds. The fox spirit refuses to leave her body and the spirit hunters have no choice but to leave and let the palace guards kill the princess. Chao Yi watches as his sister is torn to bits, and in the end, Chao Yi is also killed by the people. Lu Xu's subordinates run to the sixth palace when they encounter Yao Renju, another ten hell general. Lu Xu's subordinate, called Lei, introduces himself to Yao Ren properly, but Yao Ren draws his weapon on the guy in an attempt to intimidate him. The other subordinate tells him that there's an emergency at White Mountain, and that they are to request instructions from Master Zhu, Master of the Sixth Palace. Another Ten Hell General, called Siku Tong, tries to turn them both away, but Lei pushes back. Dong Ting, the strongest of the Ten Hell Generals intervenes before a fight breaks out. Dong Ting is accompanied by Fu Fu, another Ten Hell General. The Ten Hell Generals send Lei back on his way. Meanwhile, Chao Yi can't believe that he's only been used by the spirit hunters as a tool to seal Wang Heng. Back on the ship, Chao Bai can only watch as more spirits escape the seal. Lu Xu and Bai Long prepare to use the cannon. Chao Yi remembers his past life while being taunted by Wang Heng. Outside, Zhang continues to battle Wu Zi. The seal gets wider and Lu Xu instructs Bai Long to launch the cannon. Chao Bai pleads with Lu Xu to wait just a little more, which earns her a slap from the spirit hunter. Lu Xu essentially says that their safety and the human realm is more important than waiting for Zhang and Chao Yi. Frustrated, Chao Bai jumps in, much to Lu Xu's surprise. Back somewhere in Wu Zi's stomach, Chao Yi tries to land a punch on Wang Heng but is dodged every single time. Chao Yi seems to be transported to another plane, still refusing to acknowledge that this is the end for him. Back outside, Zhang succeeds in wounding Wu Zi. Before he can finish him off, he is ripped apart from the inside. Zhang watches in horror as Wu Zi seems to be eaten by another entity behind a smoke cloud. Then from behind the smoke, Wang Heng emerges. And this brings the anime to an end. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you...